Qualify is an open source platform as a service that enables you to self-host applications, databases, and services without managing servers. It's a self-hostable alternative to platforms like Heroku, Netlify, and Vercel. In this video, I will show you how to deploy Adonis.js applications using Qualify. We will explore three different methods to accomplish this. So let's dive right in. We will deploy the microblogging application built in the Adonis JS6 crash course. If you would like to follow along, you can find the code at github.com slash mesolabs slash posty. I have already installed and set up Qualify on my server, which I won't cover in this video. However, setting up Qualify is pretty straightforward as they provide a simple script you can run. The simplest way to deploy Adonis JS applications with Qualify is by using Nix Parks. And that is where we will start. So we will create a new project to begin with. I'm going to name this Nixparks. Typically, this will be the name of your application or project. In this video, we will be working with just one environment, which is production. But you can create other environments like staging, depending on your application. So I will select the production environment. Next, you need to create resources inside the project. Resources are applications, databases, or services you want inside your project. We will start by creating a database service. And since the application we are working with uses MySQL, we will create a MySQL database. Here, you can specify the details for the database service. So I'm going to set the database name to be Posty. And I will leave the rest as the default. So I'm going to save, then I'm going to start the database. The database is now up and running. Next, let's create another resource. This will be for the application we want to deploy. There are different ways we can bring our application inside Qualify. We have the Git-based approach. We have the Docker-based approach. For now, we will use the Git-based approach. And because the application is available inside a public repository, I'm going to choose the public repository. But if your application is in a private repository, you can choose the private repository options. Here, we'll specify the URL to the repository, github.com slash mesolabs slash posty. Then we'll click on the check repository button to continue. As you can see, it has fetched the repository. And by default, it will use the main branch, but we can change this later on. And the build pack has been set to Nix Packs, which is what we want. Then lastly, a default port has also been set, which I will change to 3333. Then we can continue. We are on the configuration page where we can further configure the application. A subdomain has been automatically generated for the application because I've already linked this domain name with Qualify. But if you have not linked a domain name to Qualify, a random domain name will be generated for the application automatically. Next, if you scroll down to the build session, you will see that we can specify commands to run for each build stage. Since we are working with a Node.js application, Next Sparks will automatically detect the respective commands to run for each stage. So for the install stage, it's going to use npm install. Then for the build stage, it's going to use npm run build. Then for the start command, it's going to use npm start. For most Node.js applications, this is fine. But there are times your application will use slightly different commands, which is the case here. For the install and build commands, we will make use of the defaults. But we are going to specify a custom command to start the application. That will be node build slash bin slash server dot js. Next, if we scroll all the way down, you will see we have a session for pre and post deployment commands. This is where we can specify commands we want to run before or after deployment. Post deployment is the ideal place to run database migrations. So we are going to specify the command to run our database migrations, which is node build slash s, then migration colon run. And because we are on production, I'm going to use the force flag. I'm going to save the changes. 
By default, Nix Packs will use Node.js version 18, but Adonis.js requires at least Node.js version 20.6. So we need a way to specify the version we want Nix Packs to use. We can go about that in two ways. The first option is to use an environment variable to specify the Node.js version. Then the second option is to specify the Node.js version inside the package.json file. I will go with the environment variable option. So let's head over to the environment variables page. The name of the environment variable is nix sparks node version. And I will set it to 20.17. Then I will paste in the rest of the environment variables. The port is set to 33.33 because that is what we specified earlier on. And the host has been set to 0.0.0.0 because the application will run inside a container. And because we are in production, the node environment has been set to production. Then we can add the database details. I will grab the details from the database we created earlier. I'm going to copy the connection URL. This will be the password. Then this will be the host. The port is the same but the user is MySQL and the database name is the same as well. We can ignore these environment variables for now. We're going to get to them later. So now we can save this, then we can deploy the application. The application has been successfully deployed and it has also run the database migrations. Now you can view the application. The application is live on this URL and to be sure that everything is working as expected, I'm going to create an account. Then I'll create a new post. As you can see, everything is working as expected. So that is how to deploy Adonis JS applications with Qualify using Nix Packs. In addition to being able to run commands pre or post deployment, we can also run one-off commands. For example, you can run the seed command if you need to seed your database with some data. With Qualify, you can also specify push to deploy by enabling it here and configuring the webhook URL. Although Nix Packs uses Docker under the hood. There are times when we might want to use a custom Docker file. Let's now deploy the same application using a custom Docker file approach. Using this same application, we can change the build pack to Docker file. But I will create a new project to keep things organized. I will call this Docker file. Like before, we are going to start with creating a database service. Again, the database name will be Posty. With the database up and running, let's create another resource. Again, I will select public repository. Now for the build pack, I will select Docker file and continue. Again, a random domain name has been generated for us. Unlike with the Nix Sparks option, we have a slightly different build session. This is where you specify the base directory of your project and the location of your Docker file. And if you want to target a build stage, this is where you specify that. By default, this will look for the Docker file in the root of the project. And luckily for us, that is where our Docker file is. But if your Docker file is in a different location, you can specify that here. If we scroll down, we have the same option as before. We can set the port for the application, which I will set to 3333. Then we also have the pre and post deployment commands session. Let's save this. And head over to GitHub to look at the Docker file. Like I said, the Docker file is in the root of the project. This is the Docker file I use for most of my projects. You can grab it and modify it according to your project. The Docker file makes use of an entry point, which is the entrypoint.sh file. And the content is pretty straightforward. 
First, we run the database migrations, then we start the application. Let's head back to Qualify and add the necessary environment variables. To save us some time, I'm going to copy from the previous project. Next, we need to update the database configuration details to the new database we created for this project. Once again, I'm going to grab the connection URL. Then we can save this and deploy the application. Again, the deployment is successful and now we can view the application. Like before, I will create an account to be sure that everything is working as expected. And create a post. Once again, the application is working as expected. So that is how to deploy Adonis.js applications with Qualify using a custom Docker file. The application we have been working with sends a welcome email in the background when users sign up. We need a way to run the queue worker that picks up and processes these jobs for applications that process background jobs. One approach is duplicating this application and changing the start command to run the queue worker instead. I have done this in the past, but it's not as efficient as it sounds. You end up managing two instances and keeping them in sync. A better approach is to use Docker Compose. So let's explore how to deploy the same application using this method. Like before, we will create a new project for this. And I will call it Docker Compose. First, I will create the MySQL database. Again, this will be Posty. Save, then start the service. The application uses Redis to store the background jobs, so we need to create a Redis service also. Again, I will stick with the default, then we can start the service. Next, we need to create a new resource for the main application. This time, we will select Docker Compose. Then here is where we will add the content of the Docker Compose file. To save us some time, I will paste in the content. You can find the content of the Docker Compose file inside the GitHub repository. So here we have two services, App and Worker. As you might have guessed, App is the main application, while Worker is for the queue worker. They are both using the same image, which is built on the application we are working with. Then we have some environment variables. Then we specify a port mapping and it uses an entry point, which is similar to what we have in the Docker file earlier. So here we first run the migration, then we start the application. Then for the worker service, again, we are making use of the same Docker image. And this service depends on the app service. So this won't start unless the app service is up and running. Again, we have some environment variables, then a port mapping. Then lastly, the command to start the queue worker. So let's save this to proceed. Let's add in the environment variables. This has been populated based on the environment variables we have inside the Docker Compose file. To save us some typing, I'm going to paste in the field environment variables. The app port is set to 3333 and the worker port is set to 3334, which are what we specified inside the Docker Compose file. Like before, I'm going to grab the database details. Then we'll do the same thing for Redis. I will copy the connection URL, then update it accordingly here. Then lastly, we have the configuration details for MailTrap. I'm going to save this, then head back to the service stack. Here, yeah, I will select to connect to preferred network. This is important because it will allow the services created inside the Docker Compose file to communicate with the services created directly on Qualify, that is, the database and Redis. 
Next, let's configure the app service. Unlike the Git based approach, a URL is not automatically generated for us here. So we need to manually enter a URL we want. I will enter a URL I already have configured. Then I will save and head back. Now we can deploy the application. Both services are now up and running, which you can see. Now we can view the application. Once again, I'm going to create an account. I have successfully created an account. Now, if we check MailTrap, I should have gotten a welcome email. As we can see, the app is working as expected. Just for the purpose of it, I'm going to create a new post. Just to be sure that the queue worker is working, let's head back to Qualify. If we come down to logs, you can see the two services we have. If we refresh, we'll see the logs for the application. And if we come down to worker, we'll see the logs for the queue worker. As you can see, it is listening to pick up jobs. And this job here is for the account I just created. So that is how to deploy Adonis JS applications with Qualify using Docker Compose. So there you have it. We have seen the power of Qualify and how to deploy Adonis JS applications using it. You can learn more about Qualify at qualify.io. And if you would like to learn Adonis JS while building a real world application, subscribe to my upcoming Adonis JS 6 from scratch course.